Hey everyone, it's John here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at a ton of time-saving tips and tricks for using your mouse in Excel. So let's get started with it. So this mouse trick allows you to close multiple worksheets at once. So I've got a bunch of worksheets open here. And if I go up and use the X button up here, I'm going to have to click through a bunch of those to close them all at once. So instead of doing that, you can hold shift and click on the X and that's going to close all the workbooks at the same time. So this next mouse trick is going to allow you to close a bunch of workbooks without saving any changes. So here I've got a load of workbooks opened and I've made some changes in all of them and I haven't saved any of them yet. Now if I go up to my X and hold shift and close that. Excel is going to prompt me and ask me if I want to save changes to my workbooks. Now there's options to just save the current workbook or save all of the workbooks, but there's no option to not save all the workbooks. But if you hold shift while clicking on the don't save button, then that's going to be the same thing as not saving all the workbooks. This next mouse trick allows us to fill down text and formulas and also simple patterns. In the lower left hand corner of the active cell cursor is what's known as the fill handle. And if you hover your mouse cursor over that area, your mouse cursor is going to turn into a small black plus sign. And you can use this to click and drag and that's going to fill down data or formulas. So there I had a piece of text data and I used it to copy it down. Now here I've got a formula and I can do the same thing. So I can click and drag that and it's going to copy down the formula. And I'm just going to undo that. So there's also another trick with the fill handle. If you double click the fill handle, that's going to fill down to the last non-blank cell in the adjacent left column. Now we can also use the fill handle to create simple patterns. So here I've got the number one and the number two. And if I select both of those and use the fill handle, then I get that increasing sequence. And here I've got the number two and the number four. And I'm just going to double click this time. And I get the even numbers that way. Here I've got a date. And if I click and drag that, I get an increasing sequence of dates by one day. Here I've got two dates and they're a month apart. So I've got January and February and I'm going to double click that and I get the increasing sequence of dates by one month. Here I've got increasing dates by a year. So I've got 2019 and 2020 and if I double click that I get an increasing sequence of dates by one year. Now Excel also has custom lists which can be used to fill data. So here I've typed in January. If I click and drag that, then I get a list of all the months. Here I've got the shorthand month of January. And if I double click, I get those filled in as well. We also have days of the week. So if I click and drag that down, and shorthand days as well. So I'm going to double click there. And we can also create our own custom lists. So if we go up into the File tab and go into Excel Options and Advanced Options and scroll down to the General section, we can create our own custom lists here. And I'm going to import a list that I've got handy already. So I just got the alphabet listed here and I'm going to import that and press OK. And let's cancel out of this. And now if I type out any letters, so let's start with G and click and drag the fill handle down, I got my alphabet listed out there. 
We can access some more advanced fill handle options if we use the right mouse button instead of the left mouse button when we click and drag the fill handle. So with the right mouse button, click and drag. And when you release, it's going to show this menu here. And there's some more advanced options. So we can fill the series, or we can fill with formatting only, or we can fill without formatting. There's options for date-specific filling. And also we have some trend, series, and flash fill options available. Renaming a sheet is pretty easy in Excel when you know this trick. So if you double click on any sheet, then that's going to allow you to rename the sheet. And when you're finished, you can press enter to confirm the name. This next mouse trick allows you to expand or collapse the Excel ribbon tabs. So if you double click on any of the tab headings, that's going to collapse the ribbon. And if you double click again, that's going to expand the ribbon. This next mouse trick is going to help us to auto fit the data in our rows and columns. So I've got some data here and it doesn't quite fit into the column width. So it's a bit too long for the size of the column. If I want to fit this data so that I can see everything, I just need to select my columns and drag my cursor over to one of the borders of the columns. And it's going to turn into this double sided arrow thing. And if I double click, then that's going to resize the columns so that all my data fits and everything's visible. This mouse trick is a quick way to create a copy of a sheet. So normally to copy a sheet, you would have to right click on the sheet, go to move or copy, and select which workbook you want to copy it to, and then the destination in that workbook, and then check off this create a copy checkbox, and press OK. And then you're going to get your copy. But a quicker way is to hold control and then click on the sheet. And once you do that, the icon is going to change into a sheet with a little plus sign on it. And then you can drag it to a location so you can see there's a little arrow icon where it's going to go. And when you release it, that's going to create a copy in that new location. So again, hold control, click and drag. And that's a quicker way to create a copy of a sheet. You can resize the formula bar along the horizontal axis by clicking and dragging between the name box and the formula bar. But if you want to quickly maximize the formula bar, just double click there. And that's going to reset the formula bar to the maximum size. This next mouse trick allows you to quickly open up the format chart area window pane for any chart. So you just need to double click on a chart and that's going to open up the format chart area window pane for you. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, normally when you use that, it'll scroll up and down the worksheet. But if you hold control when you use the scroll wheel, that's going to zoom in and out of your worksheet for you. Now you can actually change what this scroll wheel does by going up to the File tab and going to Options and going to Advanced Options and under the Editing Options section there's an option here to zoom on Roll with IntelliMouse and if you check that off and press OK then you don't need to press Control to zoom in and out. So the scroll wheel is going to act as a zoom wheel instead then. When you finish typing out a function name, so if I type out VLOOKUP and start it with a parentheses, then you get this function tooltip here, and you can actually click on that and move it around if it's in the way. But if you want to find out more information about the function, you can actually click on the function name in the tooltip. And that's going to open up the Microsoft support page for that function. And you can find out a whole load of information about how to use that function, along with examples about the function. Now, if you find that tooltip annoying, you can also turn it off. So if I press Escape and get out of that function, I can go to the File tab and Options. And if I go to Advanced Options and scroll down here, 
to the display section. There's an option here to show the function screen tips. If I click that off and press OK. Now when I type out a function, that tooltip is not going to show up. Now most people know this one, but I'm going to include it anyways. At the intersection of the columns and the rows, there's this little space here, and that's actually a button. And if you press that, it's going to select the entire sheet for you. If you want to copy only the format of some cells, then you can select them and use Format Painter. So in the Home tab, if you click on Format Painter and then click on the new location, it's going to copy the formatting to the new location. But it's just a one-time use thing. So if you want to do that again, you're going to have to go back up to the Format Painter and use it again. But if you double click on the Format Painter, then that's going to allow you to use it an infinite number of times. If you hold the control key while selecting ranges in Excel, then that's going to allow you to select multiple non-continuous ranges. And if you made a mistake in your selection, you can also hold the control key and select those cells. And that's going to deselect them from your selection. If you want to quickly create a copy of any object in Excel, you can select it and if you hover your mouse cursor over the edge of that object and hold control, then your mouse cursor is going to change and have a little plus sign above it. And if you click and drag the object and release while holding control, then that's going to create a copy of that object. Now that works for pretty much every object in Excel. So here I've got a shape and if I hold control and click and drag, makes a copy. Here I've got a picture and again hold control click and drag and it even works with data. So here select my data, hover over the edge and hold control and click and drag. If you've got a lot of sheets in your workbook then an easier way to navigate through your sheets is to use these arrows here and if you right click on either of those arrows that's going to open up this pop-up window which lists all the sheets and then you can easily navigate to the sheet you want there. So if I select that and press OK then I'm taken to that sheet. If you need to make the same change to multiple sheets then you can group those sheets together to quickly do this. So to group sheets together just hold control and select your sheets and then you can make the change you need to make And then you can ungroup the sheets, so right click on your sheets and ungroup. And then you can see that that change has been made on each of the sheets. If you've got a lot of sheets and they're not all visible on the screen, then you can quickly navigate to the first or last sheet in your workbook by using the arrow keys. So if you hold control and click on the right arrow, that's going to take you to the last sheet. And if you hold control and click on the left arrow, then that's going to take you to the first sheet in your workbook. If you right click on either the vertical or horizontal scroll bars, that's going to give you some more options for more precise scrolling in your workbooks. If you want to see what data is behind a value in a pivot table, you can do that pretty easily by double clicking on that value. And that's going to create a new sheet and the data in that sheet is only going to be the data that pertains to that particular cell. So here I can see that if I sum that up I've got 72,651 which is the value in my pivot table there. You can use the active cell cursor to navigate around a set of data. So if you hover your mouse over the active cell cursor until it turns into a four-way directional arrow and double click, that's going to move the active cell cursor to the last non-blank cell in your data set. So you can do that with any of the edges on the active cell cursor. So you can use the bottom edge, left edge, top edge, 
or a right edge to move around your data set. You can use a double click to select individual words in a piece of text data or a formula. So here I've got some text data and if I wanted to just select the last name here I can double click on that and it's just going to select only the last name there. And you can also do the same thing with formulas. So here's a formula and if I double click on certain parts of this it's going to select just that part. If you want to select the entire piece of text data you can use a triple click to do that. So if I go up to the formula bar and triple click on any part that's going to select the entire piece of text. And that works for formulas too. So if I triple click in the formula bar on this formula that's going to select the entire formula there. To edit any cell we can double click on the cell and that's going to enter us into edit mode and allow us to edit our data or formulas. A lot of menus in Excel have windows that are docked to the side of a worksheet. So for example a pivot table comes with the pivot table fields list window and that's usually docked to the right hand side of our workbook. And when you move your cursor over to the top of that window, then your cursor is going to turn into this four-way arrow. And if you click and drag the menu, you can move it into a floating style menu in the worksheet. And now normally you can click and drag this back and dock it to either side of the workbook. But if you want to quickly dock it to the last side that it was attached to, you can Hover your mouse cursor over the top and double click and that's going to dock it back to the last side it was docked to. Normally if you want to insert a shape into your workbook you need to select the shape and then draw it into your workbook. But if you want to avoid that step of drawing your shape each time you insert the shape then if you hold control and select your shape that's just going to place it directly in the workbook without the drawing step. So you can easily add a lot of shapes into your workbook. If you want to add lots of shapes and you want to draw them each time, but you don't want to keep going back to the insert tab and picking the shape each time, you can right click on your shape and lock drawing mode and that's going to allow you to quickly draw a lot of the same shape. You can quickly expand the scroll bar by moving your cursor in front of the scroll bar and when it turns into a two-way arrow if you double click that's going to expand the scroll bar. Now you can also click and drag this around to any particular size and when you double click it's going to return it to its default size. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, you can use that to navigate through your ribbon tabs in Excel. So if you move your mouse above the ribbon and use the scroll wheel, that's going to scroll through the various tabs in Excel. So here I've got a couple shapes in my worksheet. And if I'm trying to align these with each other, or inside the workbook. It can be kind of difficult because you can move them pretty much anywhere and resize them any size. Now there are options to make aligning objects easier. So if you select the object and go into the Format tab, there's options here to align shapes. So you can snap them to the grid and that's going to allow you to easily snap objects to the cells in your workbook. And you can also snap them to other shapes easily. So I like to use snap to grid, but instead of going into the options, a quicker way is to just hold the alt key while you're moving an object around. So if I hold alt right now, it's going to easily snap to the cells. And then you can also resize while holding alt and align objects perfectly to cells that way.
So that's a quick way to align objects in Excel. Just hold Alt while you're moving them around. If you've ever used the watch window, you know it's great for keeping track of changing values from formula outputs in Excel across different sheets. And there's a couple different mouse tricks with the watch window. So first let's go up to the formula tab and open up the watch window. And I'm going to add a watch on this formula here, which is a VLOOKUP. And so now we're watching that formula here. And you can see the value is female. And if we were to change the input to that formula, we can see the value changes here. Now one thing about the watch window, so this is a floating menu style window. And most of those you can dock to the side. But with watch window, you can actually dock it above the formula bar. And again, you can do that with a double click. So if you double click, it's going to dock it above the formula bar if that's where it was last time. The other mouse trick is when you're moving around into different sheets, you can always go back to a cell location in your watch window by double clicking on that watch. One of my favorite mouse tricks is that you can use your mouse to edit formulas. So here I've got a VLOOKUP formula and if I press F2 to edit it, when you're in edit mode you can see the formulas dependencies. So this VLOOKUP is looking up this value here in this range of data here. And if I want to change that I can just simply click and drag these around. So if I click and drag that and maybe resize the range and click and drag that and press enter, then I've essentially edited the formula so that it's referencing this cell here and this range here as its lookup range. So that's an easy way to edit formula dependencies. Just click and drag the ranges around. When you select a range of numerical cells in Excel, you can see a set of summary statistics at the bottom in the status bar. If you don't see those, you can enable them by right-clicking on the status bar and then checking them off here. And that's a quick and easy way to see, at a glance, summary statistics for selected numbers. So here I can see easily that I've got a sum of 204 from the numbers that I've selected. With pivot tables, there's a couple different ways to open the value field settings menu for a field. So you can do that by right clicking on the field and going to value field settings. You can also head over to the pivot table fields window and left click on the field and go to value field settings. Or you can select the field in your pivot table and go up to the analyze tab and open the field settings from there. But the quickest way is if you double click on the column header for that field. If you've got a pivot table with multiple fields in the rows area, then you can use these buttons here to expand or collapse the fields to different levels. And if you don't see those buttons, you can go up to your Analyze tab and click on this Buttons command to add or remove them. But a quicker way to expand or collapse fields with or without those buttons is to double click on the field. So you can expand or collapse different fields by double clicking on it. When you copy and paste something in Excel, normally what happens is you end up pasting the last thing you copied. So if I press Control C to copy this set of data, and then Control C to copy this set of data, and go over somewhere and press Control V to paste, I get the last set of data that I copied. Now Excel actually has a clipboard where you can see all the items that you've copied. And to open that, you can go to the Home tab and click on this little icon here. That's going to open up the clipboard. And you can see all the items that you've copied. And then from there, you can 
paste them and access everything that you've copied. Now there's an option down here to show the clipboard when you press Control C twice and you can I'm just going to close the clip clipboard and now you can use Control C twice to open that clipboard back up but you can also come into the home tab and double click on copy and that's going to open up the clipboard as well. If you're using Power Query and you've got the queries and connections window pane open then you can edit any of your queries by double clicking on that query and that's going to open up the Power Query Editor. In the Power Query Editor if you need to change the data type from multiple columns you can do that by holding control and selecting your columns. And now if you try and use this icon to change the data type, it's going to deselect all the other columns. So if you want to change the data type, you just need to keep holding control while you use that icon. And then that's going to allow you to change the data type for multiple columns. Otherwise, you'll have to right click and go to change type and you can change the type for multiple columns from here. You can cut and paste data pretty easily by selecting it and then hovering your mouse cursor over any of the edges of the active range and clicking and dragging it to a new location. You can also cut and paste data and then shift existing data out of the way by selecting the data and holding the shift key while you click on the edge and drag it. And when you do that, you're going to see this green bar indicating where the data is going to be placed. And if I release that now, what I get is my column of ones has been inserted between my column of threes and my column of fours. And you can do the same thing with moving around rows of data. So here if I select this row of data and hold shift and click and drag and release. I got my row of ones placed in between my row of threes and my row of fours here. So this mouse trick will give us some more advanced click and drag copy and paste options. So if we select our data and use the right mouse button to click and drag and release. Then we get some extra options to copy and paste data. So we can just move, which is just a regular cut and paste. We can copy the data there. And that's going to copy everything. So I've got some formulas in here and some formatting. And I got and I get just a regular copy and paste of that. Now, some of the more interesting options is to just copy the values. So there we go, just values. My formulas are gone and my formatting is also gone. right click and drag and of course we can just copy the formatting as well so no values just the formatting and if I type something in there we can see the red uh, formatting red font formatting and if I right click and drag again Another interesting option is to link the data with a formula. So here you can see that I've got formulas in my cells and they link back up to the original set of data. And right click and drag. And the last interesting option we have is to create a hyperlink. So that's going to create a link. And if you click on that link, it takes your active cell cursor to the original data up there. 
We also have some options about, so if I right click and drag, so I've got data already here, and if I release, I can choose to shift that data out of the way, so instead of overwriting it, I can shift it down. And here I've got my copy, and then I've shifted that data that was there down. So that's a more advanced cut and paste and copy and paste options using the right mouse button when you click and drag the edge of your data. All right, so we saw a ton of different tips and tricks for using your mouse in Excel. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos coming up later on. That's it for this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.